In this video, we are going to see the page table implementation for managing the paging of memory management. So paging already we have seen paging is a one of the memory management technique where uh, the user process is divided into pages and main memory we are dividing it into frames. Both the page size and frame size must be the same. So uh, the restrictions here is same like contiguous memory location but only thing is in this there is no need for the uh, process to be in a continuous space still the restriction what is the restriction all the user the user process uh, must be all the memory of the user process uh, must be present in the main memory that is the space occupied by user process Suppose the user process is 4K, then 4K space must be in the main memory. It must have that much space. But the restriction removed here is, it is not necessary that all the 4K are in continuous locations. 1K in some other place, 1K in some other place, another 1 or 2K must be in some other way. It can be split. So that is what the relaxation from the contiguous memory allocation in the paging. So how it manages the after the 1k, the next 1k may be somewhere else. How the user process correctly tracks the next line to be executed after 1k is completed, then the next k how it finds. That is through the page table. So a page table, it consists of the page number and in main memory in which frame it is placed. So using this, uh, the page table, uh, page number is used as an index into the page table. And from that frame number is extracted. Already the page table, uh, the address uh, management consists of the page number and a offset that is within the page, which line is to be executed. So that is called offset. So using this page number, frame number can be found and within that frame number, this offset will be used. So together it generates the actual physical location. So from the logical address, that is page number and its offset of the user space to frame number and the offset within that, that is physical memory location can be mapped. This is what done. This can be done using the page table. That is what we have seen in the previous video. So in this video, what we are going to say is how the page table is implemented. There are two ways in which the page table can be implemented. One is using the register itself. Within the CPU, there are many registers. So using the register itself, you can uh, implement the page table. So which means it is hardware implementation. And another way is the page table itself can be stored in the main memory. So we will see what is the difference. So when the page table uh, can be implemented in the set of dedicated registers, say for example, up to 256, if the page table entry consists of 256, element, uh, 256 uh, entries only, then you can go for registers with the CPU because registered in CPU are very faster. So using of register for page table entry is very efficient, but provided it must be within the 256. The page table length should be within 256. That is maximum number of any user process must be 256 page only, not more than that. If it is more than that, then it seems that the page table becomes more, uh, entry is more. So uh, that much number of registers may not be there. Even if it is there, it will be used for some other purpose. So uh, if it is less than 256 uh, entries, then uh, recommendation is that a uh, set of registers within the CPU can be used for implementing the page table. Or else, if it is the page table entry is more than that. So for example, a particular user process requires 1000 entries, 1000 page, 1, pages it has. So the respective 1000 frame numbers also has to be uh, entered for the page table, which means 
with 250 registers, it cannot be implemented. So naturally, it has to be stored in the main memory. So one way is to store it in the main memory. So when the page table is large, it is also kept in the main memory. So if you say, say for example, this is the page table, which consists of large entry, which is of that process one. Then page table two, which is of process two. So process is also kept in terms of frames. Okay in the main memory as well as its respective page table also is kept in the main memory. So when the page table is large, it is also kept in the main memory and the page table base register points to the page table. Then the, uh, so since it is placed in the, placed in the main memory, in order to point to the, which page table, uh, no, uh, it is executing, there is a register call that can be used as a hardware page table base register PTBR. So, like a stack pointer and a program counter, one more register can be allocated for that call page table base register. And what will be the content of that? It it is it consists of the address of this page table. So, whichever page table is currently executing that page table base address. So, for example. Here, 4000 it's not that 4000 will be the page table base address. Changing the page table request, changing what is it. So, after one process is completed, when it is going to access the next process, only the changing of the page table base address, base register. So, for example, here it is 4000 means the process, uh, process two's page table is at 5000 means just changing the page table base register from 4000 to 4000 is enough. Now it points to this page table. So from this page table, the page number and its respective frame of this process will be extracted from this. But the problem with this is to access a location I in memory. Suppose I want to access a location I in this. So for example, this process two consists of five pages, imagine. So five pages means, uh, I want to access the fourth page and first line. That is what to access the location I. That is fourth in the fourth page, first line in memory. We must first index into the page. We must find whether where the fourth fourth page is in the main memory. So for that, first we have to check. Uh, first we have to take the page table base and uh, base register and then move to the access this page table and then go to the respective page index using the page which is now nothing but fourth page and then take the in which frame it is present and that frame has to be combined with the offset which is nothing but the line number one so frame number suppose page four is present in the page uh, frame 13 maybe 13 is here so 13 and first line within the 13th frame first line so first it from the page table base register access the page table of the main memory in order to extract the frame number then using the frame number and offset access the respective frame in order to extract the data so there are two memory access one is to the page table because it is stored in the main memory why we are accessing the page table to get the particular page respective frame number if you access the respective if you get the respective page number and then you can get the frame number where it is stored in the main memory. So if you reach that frame number, which line it is addressing, that can be extracted. So this requires memory access. Using this frame number can be accessed, which is combined with the page offset to produce the actual address, frame number and offset. We can then access the desired place in memory. So there are two access, two memory access. Hence, two memory access are needed to access a byte. One for the page table entry and another for the actual page itself. So memory access is slowed down by a factor of two because two times access is done. Now, for example, whatever I have said, that is what given in the picture from the page table base register, uh, where the page is stored, the table is stored in the main memory that can be accessed. Then uh, this is the page number with this reference page number, uh, the respective frame can be taken and it is uh, combined with the offset and the respective frame number which is present in the main memory and the respective line can be extracted. So page table is stored, that is what this, it is being given here. 
page table is stored in the main memory number of entries in the page table is it must be equal to the number of pages in which the process is divided so the page table base is to contain the base address of the page table each process has its own independent page table of course each process has its own independent page table page table will provide the base address of the page table so starting at the subject the base address of the page is added with the page number referenced by the cpu it gives the entry of the page table containing the frame number where the reference to page is stored so for example consider an example uh, from the memory 4000 to 5000 uh, particular process say for example 10 pages each page of 1000k is stored then to access the page 0 within this 4000 to 5000 to access the page 0 ptbr 4000 plus 0 will be reached where frame number can be formed so in this scheme every data and instruction requires two memory access one for the page table and one for the data so two memory access problem this can be solved by using fast uh, special fast lookup hardware catch called associative memory or translation look aside buffer that is tlb because uh, already i told you the registers within the cpu are faster compared to main memory so main memory is slower than the registers so when there are two memory access even for getting one particular data definitely it will slow down by a factor of two because two times memory access is there so in order to compensate this how we can eliminate this problem we can introduce one more fast catch memory called catch which adopts the method called association that is associative memory where the value store key and its value is stored when i say it is key it is nothing but the page number and value is nothing but the frame number like how the page table is stored so actually the page table itself is stored in the tlb but how it is stored that is the difference when a page is referenced for the first time then the data from the already we have seen in main memory only we are storing the page table so when it is accessed the first time First, it will be referenced in the TLB, where now imagine the TLB is free now. There is no entry in the TLB. So, what happens? First time access, it access the page table. Then that particular page number along with frame number will be entered into the TLB. Now, when the entry is found in TLB, the it is called here. Let us see here. This is for page memory. This is called associative memory. What I have said that fast catch. So here it is similar to your page table, page number and the frame in the main memory. Initially it will be empty, but suppose a process of 10 pages is accessed uh, that, and that is present in the main memory. First reference to page zero, it checks the associated memory. Now there is no entry of that. So that will be reference from the main memory. So that page number zero and its frame, it will be referred and the work will be carried over but before doing that that page number and its frame number will be entered in this associative memory then again page number one is referenced again it is che it checks whether it is present there now it is not present only zero is there page one is not there so now page one is referenced and then that reference can be entered in the uh, associative memory as well as it refers to the main memory for that particular frame okay now uh, after some time uh, again the page one is referred imagine again the page one refer due to some for loop or some reference now anyway first uh, checking will be in the associative memory now it refers here itself it is present because entry is made already because of the uh, previous reference this page number one is present and its frame is there now it takes the reference from this it check since it is page one is present it takes a frame number respective frame number from this and go to directly go to that particular now uh, uh, go to particular frame number that now it does not go to the page table entry in the main memory for referring page one and its frame number again so one time memory access is here avoided it directly goes to the frame number. This is provided when that particular page number and frame number is here. And that is said to be the hit. So when the entry is found in TLB, which is said to be hit, if the data is present, it is said to be hit. 
the page number and offset and frame number is obtained and only one reference to memory is happened. As I said, if it is already present directly, that frame number can be taken and only one memory access is there. When the entry is not found, suppose now a page number three is referenced. So far it is not at all referenced. Then it may not be in the associated memory. It must be definitely in the page table of main memory only. So in this case, when the entry is not found in TLB, that we call it as miss. That is, it is not that. Then an access to page table, which is stored in memory to get the record frame number and offset. So there are two access to memory. This reference may be added to TLB for future reference. So now it has accessed a new reference. So that will be referred as well as the data will be added to the TLB. So that when the page number three is accessed again, now since it is present in the associated memory, it will not go to the main memory at all. So any first access, any access, any reference, any page number access or writing, first it will refer the associative memory. If it is not present there only, then it will go to the main memory. But when it goes to the main memory, that reference will be copied into the TLB. And one more thing, this TLB is a small memory. Okay, so for example, when your process has, uh, suppose a TLB con can consist of only 10 pages, imagine. Just for explanation purpose, I'm saying it is more than that. So TLB entry is imagine you have you, the total uh, TLB is only 10. It can have only 10 pages. Suppose the user process has 20 pages. Now what will happen? Reference to 10 pages will be done and then those things will be written into the TLB. So far, no problem. When it is referring the 11th page, it is not there in TLB. So definitely it has to go there into the main memory. But what happens from the main memory? See here. These are all the things. Suppose it is referring some 11th page. Imagine this has some 20 pages. So 20 entries are in this page table. But this consists of only 10 entries. Imagine. So 11th page number. Now, uh, uh, let us. this is also here. Let us imagine this is also here. Now, when it is not present, in the TLB, then uh, uh, the main memory will be accessed and it will go and uh, so, uh, get the access of the frame number from that. But by the time, and in the already I have told you, when there is a mess, that page number and reference uh, frame number will be entered in this TLB. But already TLB is full because of the 10 page effort. Now, anyway, this has to be placed. How it will do that? It will check its TLB. It has some replacement algorithm, just like what you have studied in the previous process schedule, unit two. That is, uh, least recently you uh, referred like that. Least recently used or round robin method. Any of the method it follows. And say, for example, the page zero is uh, only in a, um, declaration of the variables. And once it is executed, it will never be referred for anything else, then in that case, the page 11 will be replaced by, uh, that is the page zero is replaced by the page 11. Now it gets its one. Then when 12 is referenced, again the same method is used, around, uh, round robin method or whatever method uh, it, it all talks, that will be used in order to eliminate a particular uh, entry from this so that the new entry can be entered. It can be replaced. So the old entry, uh, if it is not at all used for a longer time, it may not be needed for that. That particular page can be found and then that can be removed. So this is what I've been done. Then, uh, this already we have seen. This is a page associative memory uh, structure which is similar to our page table. So here it is just a pictorial representation. CPU uh, generates the logical address, the page number and offset within that way. Now, first time it refers the TLB. It is nothing but our catch memory, associative memory. If this is not, then frame number will be directly taken. And it, we, this we call it as TLB hit and taken. And this offset will be combined and physical address is made. Or else what will happen if there is a miss? That is, it is not at all. This page number is not present. Then this will be accessed in the page table. Again, for uh, view purpose only, the page table is given separately. Actually, this page table is also will be in the main memory. And from here, the respective frame number is will be taken and the physical address is formed and the particular 
memory location is referred. Anyway, when referring this TLB miss, this data, page number and frame number and offset, they are returned here. As I said, uh, using some sh uh, some algorithm, uh, as an around robin or uh, anything at least recently used, that by existing page number can be removed and this newly new data can be entered. Then, what is effective access time? An effective access time memory, if the hit ratio is more, as I have seen, TLB hit and TLB miss. Hit ratio, when the hit ratio is more, that means memory access will be far because there is only one memory access. So, hit ratio, percentage of times that a page number is accessed, which is fetched from the associative register instead of from the main memory. So, hit ratio, the percentage should be more in order for their effective access time. So, for example, if 20 nanoseconds needed to search TLB, only 20 nanoseconds, whereas in order to access the main memory, it needs the same entry, it needs 100 nanoseconds because memory is lower. Whereas this cache is faster than the main memory. So, accessing of TLB is only 20 nanoseconds. This is an example. Then the 100 nanoseconds access of main memory. Then if the entry is present in TLB, let us imagine the TLB in that particular page number frame number is present in TLB, then it takes only 120 because uh, after accessing that, then it has to access the for the frame and its respective uh, lines or whatever it is, uh, 100 because memory access is 100, each memory access. So it, it takes only 120 nanoseconds, one time access. Whereas if it is a miss, if it is not present, then one uh, already it has access TLB, so that 20 is added. Then two memory access because one to the uh, page table which is stored in the main memory and another access from the page table frame memory is taken and another access to the main memory. So 100 plus 100 it is 200 plus 20 is previous itself it has access the TLB. If it is miss only, then only it will access the page table in the main memory. So we put together 220 nanoseconds. So for an 80% hit ratio, how you calculate? So for example, success rate is if it is 80% hit, then 80 into, let us consider for this uh, access, uh, 80 hit 120, because if it is present, then you have 120. If it is not present, the remaining percentage, 220 into 120, so 140 nanoseconds. For a 98% hit ratio, if the hit ratio is more, see how it has improved from 140 to 122, the access rate is greatly reduced.